Good morning, everyone. Welcome to class 847. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, deeply about the back propagation. Uh, in the last class on Monday, I was talking about the basic concept of perceptron and also I was talking about the DNA structure. In addition, uh, I derived some equation to show the basic principle of for the propagation. Now I'm going to move on to the little bit about back propagation today. I think the back propagation is most essential part of the training process of deep neural network. So even though I'm gonna use the scalar, scalar uh, representation of for a backward propagation, it is straightforward to extend that concept to the matrix formalism. So I think today's uh, class of backward propagation and next Monday's backward uh, class will be the most crucial part of uh, our class in this semester. So please pay attention to the class. I'd like to review a little bit about for the propagation, which we discussed in the last class. Let's think about the simple uh, deep neural network uh, structure. It has three layers, very simple case. It has an input layer. It has one hidden layer and it has one output layer. To build up the concept of forward propagation, this simple structure is good enough. I assume that we have three elements of input vector. I, I assume that we have three node number of hidden layer. And I assume that we have two output node, Y0 and Y1. Input vector will be transmitted to the hidden layer and output of hidden layer will be connected to uh, uh, output layer. And to make a connection from input to the hidden layer, we define the uh, weight matrix W. To make a connect from hidden layer to output layer, we define uh, matrix W dash. Of course, input of multiplication of input vector X and W will be inserted to, into the uh, activation function. So activation function. And for a while, I, I will assume that is sigmoid function. In the last class, I represented forward propagation using this equation. So this X represents the input vector. W is coming from weight here. And W dash is coming from the connection between hidden layer to output layer. And B is bias. And G is sigmoid. So 
Uh, this is a, a short review of the previous class. This is a very simplified uh, explanation of Ford propagation. In order to move on to the uh, backward propagation, we need to study a little bit about the sigmoid function because uh, to make a connection from forward propagation to backward propagation, this iteration of forward propagation and backward propagation will complete a, a training process and of course millions of millions of training process are needed to complete a uh, uh, training of a uh, deep, deep neural network. There are some connection between forward propagation and backward propagation. Of course, we need to define cost function. There are various types of cost function. Also, we have to be able to do the differentiation, mathematical differentiation that is needed for gradient descent process. Uh, this forward propagation and backward propagation is connected through these activities. So I would like to spend a little bit about the differentiation of sigmoid function. That is the very first, first part of my class today. Let's study a little bit about the sigmoid function. As I mentioned in the previous class, sigmoid function is well differentiable and very smooth function. And it has range from zero to one. There are a lot of cases in which we have to uh, calculate the probability of the object that is called classification. And in the classification purpose, DNN uh, can use the sigmoid function. There are many different types of the, the activation function, but for the purpose of class uh, uh, progress and easy explanation to you about the backpropagation concept, I'll, I'm gonna uh, spend a little bit time to talk about the sigmoid function. To, to derive the equation uh, with more simplicity and to make you understand easily, I'm not going to use the matrix or vector calculations or vector derivatives, and those are very complicated. So I'm gonna use the scholastic representation, but the basic principles can be easily discussed use this scholastic uh, equation. Now, uh, I assume that we have uh, this sigmoid function. The input is x. For the simplicity of analysis, I'm gonna use the single uh, node case that let's assume input is x and w is weight. During the back propagation, we need to uh, be able to have uh, some differentiation of cost function as well as uh, activation function. So let's do the differentiation, differentiation process of the sigmoid function. Differentiation, differentiation will follow this sequence. If you have a background of engineering, maybe in the first year engineer, uh, in the first freshman year course, you can take an engineering mathematics course. Or if you are good in mathematics in high school, you may be able to understand this uh, process. So differentiation of this function, sigmoid function will follow this first. It has minus one, that means you have to 
this minus one is converted to two and it will give us minus. So I would say differentiation of one over x is equal to minus x one divided x squared. That, that is this term. And then we also have to do the differentiation. That part is uh, this part. This is exponential function derivative of this is coming to this form. So different, differentiation means the exponential function just repeated again and the differentiation of x will give you minus w will come out from that. This is the progress of exponential uh, differentiation of exponential function. This result can be uh, labeled as equation one. Um, if in the conventional class, I, I may be able to use the blackboard or whiteboard. I, maybe I can make you eye contact with the students and this may not be board a job to derive these equations. But now I'm giving you lecture in uh, internet. So it's kind of a little bit tedious and bored. But please patient if you uh, follow this derivation process, you may be more confident on the sigmoid function and differentiation of, differentiation of sigmoid function. So please look at that. This differentiation of sigmoid function has two parts, the first part and second part. First part, first part, this part is actually G itself. G is defined by this one, so G is coming to this part. And one minus G is actually coming from here. So it has three parts, A. A is actually coming from the definition of sigmoid function. B is actually coming from one minus G. And last part of the uh, differentiation coming from the weight. So um, at the final line of this derivation, we can find that G differentiation of sigmoid function can be represented by the function itself multiplied by one minus GX and multiplied by weight. So during the back propagation, this equation will be used consistently and repeatedly. Um, the computer has to do the differentiation, but this simple formula will really help to make a very simple and efficient calculations. You don't need to do the, all the derivatives. A computer will take time and labor to do the differentiations. But the beauty of this sigmoid function is that it is differentiable, uh, beautifully smooth, and Differentiation is simply calculated as soon as you know the GX, sigmoid function. That's why 
in the classroom, I, I, I would like to use the sigmoid function to explain, I explain the uh, back propagation. Of course, there are many different types of activation function, but uh, GX uh, is very good uh, candidate for uh, back propagation. Also, I'd like to mention that uh, the output of G is a somewhere between zero to one. That means that it will give you some probability. Uh, oh. So let's assume that you show the picture of tiger or cat to your CNN network and output will give you certain range or uh, output of tiger will have certain probability like 0.2 and cat 0.8. So it's, it's a kind of the output of this sigmoid function usually represent the distribution, probability distribution. So this is summaries. Sigmoid function can be defined by this one and differentiation is easily I will repeatedly use this equation. So this is actually differentiation needed for back propagation. This value is sigmoid itself and it will have a range of this element is one minus sigmoid and also it has range of zero to one i think this element is coming from weight this is a short summary about the property of, I, I would say this is the basic property of very useful uh, equation. Now let's briefly review the class progress up to this point. The DNA training process com is composed of forward propagation and backward propagation. And this is a single iteration, but multiple or millions and billions of this iteration will make this DNA process smarter and smarter. And of course, in order to do the more and more iteration of this forward and backward propagation, we need more data. Data can be obtained from human being or nature or computer simulations. Um, in the last class, I was given, giving you the equation to explain the forward propagation. Now I am want to move a little bit into the backward propagation. And to make a connection between forward propagation and backward propagation, there are three important uh, concepts. First one is the cost function. And uh, oh, in the, right now I'm talking about the basic principle of uh, sigmoid cost function. Once we choose the cost function, we should be able to do the differentiation. That differentiation is needed for gradient descent process. Gradient descent process is a kind of key methodology to find a W weight as fast as possible. So if you want to reduce the cost and the processing time or computing time for this forward and backward propagation, you should be able to find some method to 
optimize this weight as fast as possible. One of the method is gradient descent. During the gradient descent, you should be able to do the mathematically to derive the differentiation of cost function as well as uh, activation function. And now that's why I spend some time to derive the derivative of cost function. And this one is needed for back propagation. That's why I'm starting with this differentiation of sigmoid function at the start of the backward propagation. Now, the most important part of the DNN process. For the simplicity of uh, uh, equation derivation and discourse, I will uh, use very simple case. It has input, and it has hidden layer output, and we have one output. Node number, I'm gonna talk about node number is equal to one one hidden layer and one node number. Very simple case. Also, I assume that uh, one node number. Because of this simplicity, I don't need to worry about the factors and matrix. There are many indexes to derive the equation about the, this uh, backward propagation and forward propagation using matrix and vector. For the general case, we have to be able to derive the equations for um, general vectors and uh, matrix calculations and derivatives. Uh, it is a little bit complicated. There are a lot of indexes and also we have to be able to have space concept. That is a little bit uh, difficult at this moment, but right now I'm one of focused on the just backward propagation. So for the simplicity of analysis, I'm going to assume that uh, we have just one node input, one node hidden layer output, one node output. Then it is very easy to derive the equation. Now I'm going to assume that cost function is Second, uh, for the simplicity of analysis, uh, I, I will assume that cost function is mean square error function. Uh, mean square error is defined by difference between the, our, our calculation output and divided uh, minus uh, training data set. So this training data set means that this is the uh, labeled, labeled data. Actually, this could be a true data. And I think this is DNN output. So differentiation and uh, square, that means the fun cost function will have minimum uh, value when our output is equal to the true data. And of course, during the backward propagation, we will try to move as fast as possible to the optimal point. Somehow next week, I'm going to discuss a little bit more about the cost function. Um, this mean square function is very easy to understand and very simple for 
differentiation and mathematical manipulations. But as you may understand that this, this parabolic function is very slow. There are very fast function. In some case, logarithm function is a very fast function near zero or near one. And sometimes exponential function is more faster than um, this mean square function. So in practical case of uh, deep neural network design, cost function may not be this simple. Sometimes we are going to use cross entropy or log likelihood functions. Sometimes near zero or near one, log function is much, much faster than parabolic function. So at this moment, I'm going to use this cost function of mean square error for the simplicity of analysis and discussions. But uh, condition I'm going to use the equations at this moment is uh, activation function This is the environment to, to derive the equations for backward propagation. This is very important part of the of backward propagation. Now I would like to start the the mathematical and analytical description of gradient descent. This equation exactly is the most crucial part of the uh, optimization, uh, backward propagation and optimization process of weight. In this here from connection from input vector to hidden vector is I say W1 matrix and the connection from H to Y is defined by connection matrix uh, W2. Of course, here we have activation function. Output will be converted with given Y dash output will be converted to cost function. So our job of DNN processing, un uh, processing DNA training process actually means to optimize W1 and W2. As I mentioned in, in the first class of my lecture, I told you that DNN is actually a black box. There are many parameters in there And in most cases, W is the parameter to determine the deep neural network. Of course, there are some hyperparameters, but one of the parameters that should be optimized during the uh, training process is actually W. Even though DNN is a black box, we have to find the optimal value of weight matrix, about billions of billions of weight matrix are there. We, it, it is not easily to, after the training, we, we will know that what is the W uh, values are, but as a human being, it's not easy to understand what the meaning of W are. Could be uh, a language of external world or could be language of God. So the training of this uh, deep neural network means find the optimal number or optimal value of W1 matrix and W2 matrix. 
Initially, let's assume that we are here. Initially, during the uh, training process, we just guessed. And we call it this is initialization process. At the starting of the DNA uh, training, we don't know what are the uh, target, uh, what are the optimal W, W2. Initially, we can put zero and we can start the training process. During, at initially, we can, we can guess W2. And then at some point, we have to find W2 optimum. And it will take some time, iteration, 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 iteration that consists of forward propagation and backward propagation. So initially, let's assume we are here, then we have to update W2. And this equation is actually update equation. And with the iteration, we will go to an optimal value. So this alpha is actually a learning rate. For example, we can put alpha is 0 0.001. That means to complete a training process, at least we need, I think just simply, we need more than 1000 iterations to complete, to find the optimal value of W2. Now I'm talking about this weight W2. So this gradient is actually, this slope, slope is actually this part. And then there are, so at the second stage, second stage we do the derivative and derivative finally we go to that. But sometimes we need some ratio, you know, one shot, we cannot reach to the optimal point. There might be a thousand times of this process. So this, this uh, equation is the most crucial part of backward propagation. And this is a mathematical description of gradient descent. During the training process of backward propagation, in order to complete that in the coding, computer coding, we should be able to do the derivative of cost function. In the same way, W1 can be updated using the same equation. So, um, so you can find an idea that, oh, okay, in order to uh, complete or uh, finish the backward propagation, you, we should be able to derive equations about this one and So our next st step of my class is to derive this equation. Before moving into the next part of my class, okay, next part of my class will be spent some time to derive equation about this derivative of cost function. Let's uh, pause in a moment and I would like to discuss a little bit more about the meaning of this uh, iteration formula. And how, how can we determine this number? Uh, this is one of the hyperparameters 
In order to develop your deep neural network model using your computer software, Python or C or MATLAB, you have to decide many initial parameters, such as W1, W2 initial, initial number should be determined when you start the, your training process. So uh, also uh, there are some other numbers to determine. One of them is learning rate. In many cases, you can, if you have some previous experiences, you can start with those numbers or you can look at the uh, libraries. So some, some people open their uh, software to, to the public or you can read some papers. But I think most important part of this hyperparameter uh, determination probably will be the experience or papers or open software or just guess. So in these days, I found that um, basic mathematics and the model algorithm of deep neural networks are not that deep. It is maybe if you study in a year or half year deeply into that, you can easily understand the algorithm into a uh, uh, deep neural network or reinforcement learning. But because there are many parameters or design elements that are not written in the textbook or they are not uh, understood or they are not analyzed yet. So a lot of the uh, deep neural network uh, design work need experience. Especially in this class, I am talking about a uh, derivation of very simple case like uh, one node, one node, one node, and three layer cases. But actual problem could be dimension of X input could be millions or billions. And the number of hidden layer could be thousand. And this matrix could be billions multiplied by billions, very big size. And also how to generate or how to obtain the, this data and also how can you do the labeling work. There are many tedious and complex work and those are really area of experience. So uh, once again, I'd like to come back to the back propagation. Initial, uh, I'm, for the simplicity of analysis and class teaching purpose, I'm gonna derive some equations for a case of uh, node number of one. So we can do the very scholastic uh, mathematical description. And for this case, we, I assume that we have only three layers. And in those cases, we have only two uh, scalar number, weight number W1 and weight number W2. And I assume that this activation function is sigmoid function and cost function is assumed to be the uh, mean square function. And uh, uh, during the backward propagation, we're gonna use the gradient descent method that is represented by this equation. And also I would like to spend a little bit about the meaning of minus here. If the gradient is positive, this area is a positive gradient, we have to go back to have a minimal optimal point. That's, that means minus sign is here. In this area, let's assume that your W2 is here, then gradient is becoming minus. Then we have to move a plus direction. Minus multiplied minus means the next step is moving positive direction. I think this minus actually coming from uh, the uh, the mathematically, we assume that optimal point is always uh, like a parabolic uh, structure. That means if the, your initial number is uh, positive, you have to go back. And initial gradient is the uh, positive and uh, negative, we should go to, uh, go to the forward direction. That is the, the shape of this uh, cost function. Actually, e even though this is mean square error, uh, exponential cost function or cross entry uh, cost function or uh, logarithm uh, cost function all has that this kind of shape. 
then means that we should have minus sign here in the, this iteration process. Now in this page of the, my class, I'm gonna derive some chain equation. Chain equation is actually needed to make a connection from cost function, cost function to W2 and W1. We initially decide the cost function, then we will be able to have an update equation for W2, and then we will be able to have an update equation of W1. I will start with that. Let me spend some time if it is a very uh, 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 bored process, but if you follow these equations, you will be more confident on this back propagation. Let me start with as at the previous page, I was saying that W2 should be updated by Now I'm, I'd like to derive this equation. Use the derivative of this function. Derivative of this function means that because of this is square, actually it two and two are cancelled each other. So we're gonna have this term. You know, derivative of this one. Uh, no. So half of the square actually derivative means this, this actually coming to this part. And this is partial derivative equation, which you learn from your first year freshman year engineering courses. And then you have to uh, make a derivative of this term that because this y dash is constant, because of this is true value, labeled value, this is not a function, this is actually constant, so you can obtain this equation. So uh, we assume that y y equals equal to sigmoid function, and that is g, and input of g sigmoid function will be the multiplication of h with w two. That's why we have here, and uh, in the previous class in the previous slide uh, I, I showed that derivative of sigmoid function is itself 
1 minus g and w. That's exactly coming to here again. Itself, 1 minus g and derivative of that inside this one. And now, it's going to be This is really the first part of the chain rule. So what I'm trying to do is let's assume that we define, we define the activation function and we define the cost function. Now, I would like to find some relationship to update W and W2. And the basic relationship to find the optimal point a point of this W uh, matrix after a certain number of iteration is this one. This equation is called gradient descent equation. Now, in order to the derive the equation, I should be able to have a uh, equation to show derivative of this cost function with respect to the W2 weight. And now I'm doing that uh, work. So in in order to do that, I should be able to derive the equation to show that derivative of the cost function with respect to the W2. If we have this gradient, we can update this W2 in each iteration. So also I assume that cost function is um, a mean square function, then at the first stage, we do the derivative of this cost function, then y minus y dash will come here again and also we should we 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 should differentiate the y with respect to y uh, w2 and you know that output of y is actually sigmoid function and sigmoid function is actually uh, input is the w2 multiplied by h w2 multiplied by h and in the previous slide, we show that derivative of sigmoid function is actually itself, one minus itself, and derivative of this input of this sigmoid function. That will be an element of H. So uh, the, this is the first part of the um, uh, gradient descent. You can see that derivative of why we need derivative of cost function because we want to uh, find we want to update w2 until in a direction so that we can minimize the cost that's why we need to have mathematical description of uh, cost function derivative of cost function with the w2 and we found that 
if we know the output of this hidden layer, output of this deep neural network, and the true number, that, di that difference, and then output function, output value, and one minus output value, uh, that is the actually differentiation part of the sigmoid function, and h, h means the uh, hidden layer output. As soon as we know these values, we can calculate the, we know that derivative gr gradient of this cost function with respect to W2. And we can define that delta y, delta y is the gradient of this uh, cost function at the stage of output that can be defined this one. And once we, in the, during the coding of your deep neural network, if your computer program can calculate this is easily because this is deep neural network, deep neural network output. And this one is the true value. And of course, this is output and one minus output. This is very easy to calculate as, as far as you have output of the neural network and true value, then you can easily calculate the um, gradient, the slope of your cost function and multiplied by uh, learning rate. As I told you that this number could be in a range of uh, zero, 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 001 or some numbers, then you can keep updating this W2 until you have a minimal cost function, this function. So uh, this equation is the called chain rule. In a similar fashion, in a similar fashion, so you can find the update equation, update equation, you have to have you should have be able to have this one. If you have all these uh, derivatives and cost function and H, uh, and of course, if you know the Y and Y dash, and then you can develop chain rule and you can update W1, W2. Uh, those are the chain rules. If you can generalize this process, for, we can do the, for the case of vector and matrix. And of course, number of layer could be million or billion or number of nodes case, millions and billions. And we can do the generalization process. Today's class, I just simply derive an equation to show chain rule, chain rule of first stage, just one. I just, today I just derived the equation to show that how to calculate and how to update W2. But next, uh, next Monday, I will uh, repeat this part again and we, I will show you the chain rule EK, update equation for W1. Generalization of this chain rule in a vector case or generalized matrix case, just index is complicated and number is complicated, but basic rules are the same. So now I would like to uh, stop the class at this moment because I don't want to go more deeply and deeply into the mathematical description. I, pr probably next Monday, I will go more deeply into the mathematical description and generalization. And in April class, I'm gonna show you uh, some uh, real applications of the neural network such as CNN and RNN and LSTM and gen uh, generative advisory network like that. I'm gonna derive this equation for general case, but if I go more deeply, deeply into these equations, some of you may drop this class. Uh, so I don't want you to do that. So I don't want to go more, more about this mathematics at this moment. I will go more slowly and slowly. After next uh, next class on Monday, I'm going to repeat this part of again, and then I will add more and more mathematical part. That is my strategy in this class. 
uh, I, I think once again, I want to emphasize that um, backward propagation is most critical and important concept of deep neural network. We don't know what's going on inside uh, the deep neural network because I, I think that is a kind of black box. What I know is that how they learn, that core part is the backward propagation. In, in the backward propagation, mathematics are needed. And one of them is the linear algebra and this partial differential equations. Uh, pl please be patient uh, because my class, during my class, I, I, I'm driving all those equations. It is sometimes bored and tedious, but sometimes when you are starting to learn about deep neural network and reinforcement learning, if you look at textbooks, sometimes it takes some time. But if you look at these notes at the first glance, you can easily understand the concept and you can spend more time for uh, deeper and deeper uh, study. Thank you for your attention.